This show brought to you by Circle of Seven Productions, www.cosproductions.com. Please be sure to subscribe and welcome to our circle. Hello, everybody. This is Readers Entertainment Radio, and I am Patricia W. Fisher, and I am so happy to be talking to you guys today um, about a new fabulous author to me, as well as her wonderful books. I wanted to give a big shout out to all of you that celebrate National Chicken Dance Day. That is today. So, you know, throw down some music and poke around your dining room table if you have nothing else to do today. But before you get too involved in a good chicken dance, you really should pick up an amazing book, or several amazing books, by the author we'll be talking to about and to today. Twyla Turner was born in Juliet, Illinois, and was almost immediately enamored with all things entertainment, and she yearned for something more. She wrote her first story in the third grade and fell in love with creating a whole new world. Um, it wasn't long before she started self-publishing, and her first novel, novel Starstruck, um, she's interested uh, her, she's interested in science and animals and wanting to be the next Oprah, which I could totally see. Um, and she has traveled extensively. She also absolutely loves hearing from her fans, and she writes amazing books. Um, she's a champion for the underdog, and she writes um, interracial erotic romance with very curvy heroines and I absolutely love that. To date, she has 17 published works, 15 full-length novels, two novellas, and her brand is Novels with Curves, Celebrating Our Beautiful Imperfections. Welcome to the show, Ms. Twyla Turner. How are you today, my dear? Are you there? Twyla, are you there? Well, it says she's in the queue. Just we'll give her a second. But while we are waiting uh, for her, I wanted just to give a big shout out to everybody who's working really hard in the health industry uh, to take care of everyone um, right now, other than the normal um, busy traffic that you people get this time of year. Um, after I worked in the ER, I know that May can be a, a month of, uh, slow down when it comes to cold and flu season, but then allergies hit and asthma, and then of course injuries because people are outside more. Um, and so, and then now we have COVID nineteen. So you know, please everyone stay safe and stay well. And um, you know, we are thinking about you, and we very much appreciate what you're doing, as well as all the people who are coming into work and um, working in everything from doctor's offices to uh, restaurants to, um, you know, the, the garbage truck guys came today, um, all that. So we very much appreciate all of you and thank you for everything you're doing. Um, so let's see if we can get Twyla on here. Are you there, dear? Twyla, Hello? are you there? Hi, I'm there here. you are. Hi. Oh, Yay. my goodness. I'm like, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I know. So it's like sorry. you're in I the queue. Know what uh, it, you know, I, I, so it it all I worked out. Ro- I moved um, rooms. Yeah, I moved rooms. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So you're doing okay today? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, beautiful sunny day in Phoenix, Arizona. So yeah. I yeah. We've, we have the same here. We had a big storm come through last night in San Antonio. Um, and so I know you guys get some pretty. Uh, crazy storms out there as well so um yeah it's it can be just beautiful like this and then of course you know five hours later you're looking at um you know black clouds you're like hmm i'm not so into that so yeah yeah and we get (laughs) get, get the uh, dust storms so it's crazy yes so I was, you know, I'm all about the nature stuff. Like, you you know, you love animals and everything. And I'm sure yeah. you've probably seen some of the documentaries about um, all these animals that, like, burial uh, – well, one, was, one of them was the, um, like, the desert, you know, it says – and, you know, the – the naturalist is always very philosophical when they're talking on the, yeah. as the narrator. And, and, and it's like, and it looks like there's no uh, life here. And then, you know, then they, yeah. they have all the flooding, you know, and the rain, and then these frogs come out of nowhere. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, are you kidding me? So, I mean, it's, it's, always, uh, it's always very interesting to see yeah. all these different things. Yeah. Yeah. We, we actually have wild horses here. And I'm from Illinois. And so I'm like, wild horses? Like, the, this mm-hmm. is beyond my even understanding. <laughs> and I've seen yeah. them. They're gorgeous. <laughs> well, um, 
So when you moved from, I mean, you moved all over. You didn't have a straight move from Illinois to Arizona, correct? It was, you moved all over and then, right. So yeah, what was I, your I, biggest, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, dear. Oh, I was going to just say Go that I, I yeah. went from from Illinois and I lived in Japan for a year teaching English. And then when I got back to Illinois, one of the friends that I made while being in Japan was from California and I ended up moving to California for like four years and then to Arizona. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What part of California were you in? Um, Long Beach. I was in Long okay. Beach. And, um, yeah, it's uh, it's quite gorgeous. Well, being from Illinois, all I knew of Long Beach was like, you know, Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. <laughs> and so um, when I got there, it, I was, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's stunning. And I got, I was so lucky. I got to um, get a really cheap apartment in a building that used mm-hmm. to be like an old 1920s hotel. And, um, oh, and it was wow. like right in the heart, it was right in the heart of downtown and a few walks from the aquarium and the ocean and some in boat docks. Oh my God. It was, it was such an amazing place to live, but it just became I'm like uh, just my job at the time, and I was struggling. And so when my parents retired to Arizona, I said, like, "Can I come with you?" Yeah, <laughs> that's how I'm here. Yeah. But please tell me you wrote about all those experiences in Long Beach because it it is. I mean, I've been to that area, yeah. but you know what surprises me the most about that area is. It gets cold like that water. That Pacific Ocean is cold. (laughs) Yes, yes. And I did. Actually, my first book was set in Long Beach. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah, I did. Basically, my first book, I was trying to um, teach myself to write a novel. And so, really, like, the character was based off me um and yeah. my fantasy and and so that's kind of how I went with it and and like she lived in the same building I lived in kind of thing and so uh so yeah Long Beach was really great for inspiration for sure yeah how long did it take you to write that first book like from the time you said that catalyst that said you know what I'm going to write a book to the time you wrote mm-hmm. the end and it was ready to be printed how long did that take okay well it is I'm going to try and make it as short as possible, <laughs> but we got time. Kind of You're fine. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was kind of weird. Like in February of 2013, I had started writing it and I only got like a chapter and a half in, and then I stopped okay. and, and I am the worst. I am a procrastinator and I'm also a, a never finish what I start kind of person. And so, okay. um, so I put it to the side and forgot about it. And um, when I moved, to, and that was when I was still in Long Beach. And then when uh, I moved to Arizona, my mom and I um, went up to Sedona for a, like, mm-hmm. a psychic fair or whatever. We just like doing that kind of stuff. So we went to the psychic fair in Sedona. And Sedona has what they call vortexes. Like, there, there's these vortex, and there's about four of them, I think, up there where it mm-hmm. has like this energy is supposed to have an energy and it's healing energy or something like that. And so we went up right. it's gorgeous. It's got the red rocks or whatever. And then once we got back, like it, it, it took about a week, a week later, um, it was almost as if like someone flipped a switch on in my brain and right. I sat down. I, it was like around, I don't know what time it was. It was like 10 or 11 at night. I picked up my laptop and I just started continuing the story. And it was 15 mm-hmm. days later that I was finished with the first night. Nice. And I, and I was like, I can't believe I just did this. <laughs> and then right. what's interesting is that that light switch has never been flipped off. Now, mind you, sometimes um, I, her and I, my mom and I went that first time, um, we went a second time, like j- literally a week later, and then I didn't go back again for another year or two. And then it was okay. another three years before I went back to Sedona. And um, and I had to get back because I just was drained. And my character uh-huh. stopped talking to me, and I had just like no creativity left. And I just could not write, and it scared me like oh no I, I I can't write it's not coming and I don't know what to do and I go 
I haven't been to Sedona in three years. Maybe that's why. And I went. Okay. My mom and I went, and we, we took a Jeep tour. And then when we came back a week later, I started writing again. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is crazy. Yeah. This was last year. This was last year. So I absolutely recommend to creative people or people who need any kind of healing to visit Sedona, Arizona. It is. There you go. I don't know. It's miraculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I always, I always love it when I hear authors say, well, my character stopped talking to me because writers, anybody who has that muse just kind of nods. Mm-hmm. Of course, people who don't really yeah. get it are saying, should we call somebody for you? It's like, no, no, <laughs> it's, it's honestly, it's normal. Um, and, and it's just, it's fun to hear that. But, you know, there's been a lot of discussion in the past couple of years about, um, you know, own voices and characters having, mm-hmm. um, you know, people writing about, you know, themselves and their their worlds mm-hmm. and their lives, and it's not always the traditional cookie cutter type situation. Yeah. When you're right, yeah. when you were initially writing those characters, was there ever doubt in your mind? Because I know the publishing industry is it's still catching up, um, but yeah. and and writers have to push the boundaries um, because mm-hmm. readers are asking for these uh, these stories. So. Yeah. Was there ever a time in your life that your character said, well, maybe I should be this or that instead? Or were they? Or did you always feel very passionate about making sure they were exactly what you had Im- uh, imagined? Um, there was like, there was a, a moment that, um, because, you know, my, my primary uh, story or my primary genre is um, like interracial. And so... Yeah. Um, there was there was a moment where um, I was like, should I write quote unquote mainstream, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, and 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 I thought to myself, no, no, I, I have to write what inspires me. I have to write the stories, um, the untold stories of, I guess, curvy black women, <laughs> like, um, yeah. because that's what I am. And, you know, that's what I am. And yeah. that's what I craved growing up because growing up, you know, oh my goodness, the library visits and leaving with stacks of romance novels uh-huh. um, and, I you know, it. and reading jo- mm-hmm. Johanna Lindsay and um, Judith McNaught and Laverell Spencer and like reading and and Nora Roberts reading all of those and I didn't see myself in them but I still loved them Mm -hmm. but I didn't see myself in them and so you know when I started writing like it was just one of those things I'm just like I just want to write the story that I've wanted to read my whole life and so with every book that I go into I write the story that I've always wanted to read so and so I, I have to, I have to stay true to what I want, like no matter what. <laughs> yeah, I mean, did you have mm-hmm. a time where someone said, "Why don't you write about this?" So, yeah, like a more mainstream thing. I, did you oh, yeah. have that pushback at all? Oh, you did. Okay. okay. Um, well, I mean, I and just was, uh, well, what was interesting? It was just, it was just like a. Um, a friend and her husband were just like, well, why not write mainstream or whatnot? And I go, well, mm-hmm. um, the, I'm just like, every, I, I almost feel like everybody should write what they know <laughs> and give a chance for someone else to write theirs. Like, right. like I don't know, like I feel that there's certain, like there's certain characters that I don't want to touch because I want people who are, um, who are, well, I mean, I could research them for sure, but people who mm-hmm. are that thing or experience that thing to write that, you know, like I don't, uh-huh. I don't want to write LG, I don't want to write LGBTQ because I don't want to get it wrong. And I'm just like, you know what, I will let LGBTQ yeah. authors have that space, you know, and so that's kind of why I'm like, right. no, no. I, I'm, I totally want to write, you know, my interracial characters. It's just, that's just where my head is at. And so, um, but it's interesting how little pushback I've had. And I know some other um, authors who write interracial might have had more, but for some reason I haven't had a whole lot of it. Um, I did have someone ask me just recently in my direct messages, they're just like, um, is that all you write? And I said, absolutely. And they're like, oh, okay. okay. And then, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to argue. Fine. I'm not going to fight. This is what I write. <laughs> so, yeah. Right, um, right. 
it's not too bad. And you and you wanna yeah, and you wanna write what speaks to you. I mean it's it's like anything. If you don't have passion about the characters and their journey, um, and you're mm-hmm. just kind of writing like fill in the blank here, um, readers know. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. For sure. For yeah. And and I'm so glad you said the, the comment about writing L G B T Q because you know, I've had plenty of people in my life over the years um, who are part of the LGBTQ community and, and still are. And, um, and, and I, it's that feeling of I want to write a story about, mm-hmm. you know, love is love. But then it's like, well, what am I going to miss? Because I'm not in that world, yeah. you know, the everyday yeah. little things. Um, yeah. And so you want to do right by whatever you, you script. Yeah. Um, so it, and, but it's, but you, you don't want to, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. The it, uh, the it, authenticity, um, like yeah. there are there are little itty bitty things to day to day life that we may not know or understand that they experience, mm-hmm. and so like, you know, I just I I just feel like they might tell their story better than I could tell their story. The mind you, like I um, absolutely will read, but I, I just like oh, I'll let you I'll let you handle it. <laughs> like sure, I don't want to mess it sure. up. I, I don't want to mess up your story. So. Right. Well, I mean, it's kind of like, too, I think that um, years ago I went to a talk and there was a a very lovely speaker who talked about writing about places you've never been. And Mm -hmm. she said, you can look up, you know, the town and geography and all that other stuff and even talk to people from there. But there's really nothing like being, like, immersed. Um, It's true. So there's certain, you know, if you're walking like you've been to Sedona, I could look up a bunch of stuff about Sedona. Um, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to know what it, the air smells like, and I'm not going to know yeah. um, what it feels like when the sun comes up over the mountains. You know, there's a different feeling yeah. Uh, yeah. versus someone who's trying to write about San Antonio and who's never been here, but I live here. You know, it's, yeah. it's one of those, yeah. and it doesn't mean you can't do it, but like you're saying, mm-hmm. you want the passion and yeah. the true, yeah. the trueness of it in there. Yeah. Um, and, and, so and I, and I with, try to, yeah. go, go ahead. Oh, I, it just just Sorry. basically, it's it's it can be done. You know, like we're saying, it can be mm-hmm. done. But you're right. Yeah. I mean, let's. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, listening the past few years, as opposed to mm-hmm. um, just trying to, I guess, thinking I could fix stuff. Um, and yeah, I think yeah. I've learned a ton. Yeah, um, because you know, it's it's that feeling of okay, let's all you know, uh, listen and to each other. Wanted and there's something to, about no, yeah. yeah. You want to, you know, like make everybody happy, and it's that sometimes yeah. people need to vent; they need to get it out. Um, yeah, it's, so, it's a knee jerk yeah. reaction to want to fix, to want to fix. Like I want to yeah. fix, and it's just like, no, just listen. So yeah, yeah. I'm doing a lot of listening <laughs> lately, and I'm so glad. I'm so so glad. Um, so tell me about you have this wonderfully, and let me say sexy cover on um, your newest book called Rock the Curve. Yeah. So tell me about your story and how you came up with it. Well, um, it was interesting about the um, beginning of the year, uh, someone on Facebook, I swear a lot of my ideas come just so randomly. And someone mm-hmm. on Facebook said something about um Maybe they maybe they mentioned rock star romance, or they mentioned they they asked a question to authors like, "What uh, trope have you not written that you're interested in writing?" And it okay. was one of those things like, "Man, I haven't written a rock star romance, and I love rock star romances." So <laughs> I go, I, "I'd like I'd like to do that." And so I just I kind of I, I open up my laptop and I have kind of a, a um, notebook feature on my laptop and so I okay. I like to when an idea comes to me to write it down or type it down and um and I was just like okay so interracial romance how exactly would this dynamic work like what could the storyline possibly be and I go well you know he's this beautiful guy who has this amazing career like and she's an aspiring solo artist and you know and she's black and curvy and and that's not always what is wanted you know in the music industry and so I go well that's perfect you know I'm just like oh that would be so perfect and create perfect conflict because she would um 
you know, resent him for that. But then obviously he has a little bit more to him than she realizes. And so I kind of typed the little loose based, you know, description of the book and then left it alone. And uh, Mm -hmm. then an author friend posted, because it was from a pre-made, it was a pre-made cover. And um, the, the, the website is covers in color. And so she posted it. She said, I don't have time to write this story, but someone has to take this gorgeous cover. And I saw okay. it and immediately was like, oh, my God, that's my rock star. And that's my aspiring solo artist. Absolutely. And so I said, I have to buy it. I don't care if I don't have enough money. I will eat ramen <laughs> for a month. <laughs> yep. I sandwiches. Have to All about have sandwiches. It. <laughs> yes. Yes, and so I I, pur- I purchased it, and then um, I'm proud of myself. I I was the one that came up with the idea of using the guitar for the ze- for the um for the O in rock, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, and she and she of course was like, oh, that was such a great idea, <laughs> and so and that just it's came beautiful. together, and literally, yeah, and and literally the cover is what inspired me to get to the story and start writing it. And I've never done that before. I've always like done the cover, either I'm all I've I'm done or I'm almost done with a book when I either create a cover myself or hire someone to do it for me. So this was the first time that I had the cover first, and it was just so gorgeous that I I have to I'm like I have to write the story right now. <laughs> so right, um, that's basically how it came about. So did you um. Did you base your rock star guy and your um, your lovely lovely heroine on any particular mm-hmm. uh, people out you know that we would know famous people or was it just kind of um, it's like if you put this person in if who played it in a movie you know who would who would you yeah, have it, to play? I kind of did a like mashup of like <laughs> people in my yeah. mind you know um, and. Uh, like for him, I, I don't know. There, there's this uh, beautiful man, I, and right now I can't remember his name. Um, this beautiful man, he's actually um, Spanish from Spain, um, and mm-hmm. oh my God, he's just drop dead gorgeous. And I go, and that that has to be him. That has to be him. But at the same time, like I don't know. There, some a, a friend of mine said this, and I go, you know what? You're kind of right. Um, but she mentioned uh, Milo Ventimiglia from The Day uh-huh. This Is Us. The day, I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, he does look like him. <laughs> like she said, the guy on he the does. cover kind of favored him. And I'm like, he does. And like, yes. Um, and then her, she's kind of um, a combination of at least physically you know, and mm-hmm. attitude wise, a, a combination of like um, Jill Scott and, and Lizzo, mm-hmm. um, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, uh, but th- like his, the thing about his past um, and like who he was before when he was a child that I talk about in the very beginning of the book, but I don't know if I want to give that away, <laughs> but um, right, that his, impediment that he had uh i actually mm-hmm. got that from uh joe biden <laughs> randomly because right. joe right. biden had recently mentioned it recently mentioned it and and talked to a kid about it about how he had that same issue when he was younger and i go why not make my rock star have that you know as at a young age that kind of like shaped the person that he is um, yeah, and so yeah, it's. I swear, my my characters are often like mashups of different people combined. Oh, for sure. You know, you'll yeah. have like they look like this person, but they sing like this person, and they act like you know. Yeah, yes. there's always the, yes. the mashup. Exactly. Yeah. Milo was on a show called Heroes. Oh God, what yeah. was that? Ten years ago? Yeah, he played a nurse on that, yeah. which I yeah. thought was great. Um, and then um, and then there's Mel Tillis. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he was a country singer for years, and he had a horrible stutter. Um, but when he sang, he did not stutter. He did not. Oh. So, and see, and yeah. that that was just totally random that I thought of that. I'm just like, what if he had mm-hmm. a stutter, and then when he sang, he didn't. I, I had no idea that there was 
someone out there that that really was, you know, that that was how they sing. Oh, my God, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm laughing because if you're having, like, aspects of Joe Biden in this and then what – what um a romance author said that she had based one of her heroes on uh, Dr. Fauci recently. She was like, uh, like <laughs> yeah. an old. So it's yeah, like, yeah. Yes, all the Democratic <laughs> players are all in romance novels. Like, you know, Stacey Abrams going to lead the way. We're going to make a whole series yes. of Democratic romances. It's going to be. <laughs> if I knew, if I knew more about politics, I totally would. But I feel like I don't know enough to. Yeah get by on, you know, on writing it and, and then trying to research it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't right. know. You I can only like watch so much Schoolhouse Rock. Confusion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. I'm a bill on no. Capitol Hill. <laughs> That's right. And I also actually, I did like a couple of years ago, I was like, you know what? I'm insane because I'm just trying to figure out all of the, the, the levels and who has what and where everything is. I mean, I know there's three mm-hmm. branches of power and I know where people sit, but yes. like the specifics. And I actually bought yes. a um, U.S. government for dummies. I, I, oh, I did. Yeah. I bought it. Mind you, I've not read idea. it. <laughs> I have not read it, but I have it. So I took that it's first step. It's just so boring. It's so boring. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. But we should it's know the lot. basics. I mean, you know, it, it's yes, important. Yes, the basics. Um, yes. <laughs> Yes, let's do that. <laughs> um, so do you have another book um, get, that's going to swing off of this one, a, a sequel, to any of the characters um, in um, Rock the Curve? I, I actually, it hadn't occurred to me at all. Like, I was kind of like, this is a standalone. Like, I, I'm mm-hmm. kind of, especially because I shy away from series because I have okay. such a hard time um, – concentrating on one thing before my mind is flitting off to something else. <laughs> so, right. um, so I have two series that are um, in the works now. Like I have two books from a four part series and then one book from a three part series. They're all, you know, like standalone, like each couple mm-hmm. has their own story, but it, they're all connected kind of thing. And I have that right. going on, and so I'm like, I can't even think about putting another series on my plate because I already have readers ready to commit mutiny because I haven't finished the others. <laughs> so I'm kind of doing this whole, I'm attempting, I don't know if my brain will allow it, but I'm attempting right. to do like a book from one of the series, then a random standalone then another book okay. from the other series, and then a random standalone. Like, I'm trying to do, like, every other. And uh, okay. just so that I can give my brain a break from one series, you know, <laughs> instead of right. finishing it all right. at once, which I should. But <laughs> Do you have a routine for um, your writing? It's kind of, kind of. Um, for the most part, I'm, a, I'm actually a, um, a morning writer. Um, and not a okay. nighttime. I wish I was a nighttime. I wish I was that, you know, burning the midnight oil kind of writer. But by by that time, I can't function. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. so I'm a wake up at 6 a.m. Um, and get my coffee and sit down and start writing. Um, and then I'm a, what do I want to call it? I'm a plotting pantser. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. I, I, um, I write like character description, what's their motivation and a loosely based. And then Mm -hmm. I start writing and I start Mm -hmm. writing Mm -hmm. and I I have an idea of kind of where I want it to go, but I just kind of write. And then once I get to the middle, which is always the hardest for me to connect the excitement of them meeting and getting to know each other and making love for the first time to then getting to the end. Like, cause that middle is just like, you know, it can, it's so easy to become boring. So um, yeah. that's when I, I kind of get stuck and I don't know what to do. And then that's when I sit down and will literally do a detailed outline till the end. And um, right. And then go back to it. So yeah, I'm a I'm a plotting pantser. <laughs> okay, get you started yeah. and and then you know taken off and adding to. So did you do you yeah. have 
characters that your, your readers have approached you about and said, what about this person? And it's someone that you say, I had no plans for that person. But they said, but you have to write about that person. <laughs> you mean like um, um, to write more, like in a mm-hmm. series? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I have I I have had readers like adamantly. There, oh, there's a novella that I wrote called The Rescue, and it was just for you know a little Valentine's Day. You know, the character's name was Val, which was short for Valentine um, because their parents sure. were evil like that, and so. <laughs> So, um, and everybody, I have readers constantly that will, hey, you going to write a little bit more about Val and Bo? Or are you going to do a whole book for Val and Bo? I'm like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> and then I, I also, my very first book, Starstruck, people, um, I think they stopped asking now, but they asked often, like, are you going to write a third book? Guys, uh, unless it comes to me, I can't do it. <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't given in yet, but I've, I've had them a lot. <laughs> right, but I mean that's that's a huge big deal because it's it's funny, you know, we write our characters and they talk to us and all this stuff, and we're super invested. Um, mm-hmm. But then when people come to us that have read our stories and they're like super invested and they're yes. asking questions. It's a, it's a little bit unnerving in a way because first yes. you're like, oh, thank you for reading my book and thank you for liking my characters. Mm-hmm. But you do know these are fictitious, fictitious people, right? <laughs> you know, but, but they're really invested. So it's really a invested. <laughs> Super. So, I mean, it, it's yeah. huge, but it's one of those, it's a catch-22 kind of thing because it's like, Without that, like, I don't even know, like, sometimes do you imagine if you didn't get this kind of love that that you wouldn't be able to keep going sometimes, you know, because it's hard. But at the same time, you're just like, you're so grateful for the love. But at the same time, you're like, please leave me alone. (laughs) Yeah, please stop talking about it. I'm like, I feel, and I feel so bad, but I'm just like, I can't. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because I I get her I get harassed a lot, especially for those two series that I need to get done. Um, at at the very least, once a week, I mm-hmm. get, are you gonna finish the Curvy Girls Club? Are you gonna finish Bound Through Time? Like I uh, at mm-hmm. least once a week, and so <laughs> I will. I swear, I will. <laughs> I promise, as soon as I get off this radio interview, I will write something, I swear. <laughs> oh, man. And, and yes, I, I will. I'm just like, if I, if I don't, I feel like they might show up at my house at some point. Mm-hmm. They might show up. I'm like, I, I, I have know. to get this done. But, yeah. <laughs> well, and it's even harder when you have friends that, you know, they're not writers, but they love your books, and they know you, and they can mm-hmm. actually call you on the phone and say, hey, <laughs> What are you doing right now? I'm like, oh, I'm doing like, yeah, you're not writing. I'm like, oh, well, thanks. That was a setup, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm not answering the phone next that. time you call. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my my favorite is being on Facebook. If I'm on Facebook and I'm just, you know, randomly enjoying myself, cracking jokes, they're just like, shouldn't you be writing? I'm like, yeah, I know. Here. Thanks. I do need a break. <laughs> yeah. I know how to eat and like, I, breathe. <laughs> yes, I just recently had posted about um, you know being bored in quarantine, and uh, I said I like I gotta find something to do, and then I made sure that I said side note, <laughs> don't stop right. telling me that I need to write, <laughs> yeah. because I'm taking a mini break, okay. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> I know yeah. I know my readers. They would absolutely be like, "Well, if you're bored, you could, <laughs> you could always the way, start writing that book." That's right. <laughs> yeah, I no. I got a um I got a DM I got a DM from a reader just this a couple days ago, and she said, and at first I was like, "Oh God!" The way she started, I'm just like, "Oh no," she said the problem with your books are, and I go, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> she, said, she said, it takes you months to write them, but only hours for me to read them. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. 
Oh, it's almost hostile. Yeah, I just almost think about hostile. yeah how long it takes me to agonize over this you know storyline that I'm trying to make just perfect. Um, yes. And you know, again, you appreciate the love, but yeah, sometimes you're like, mm-hmm. okay, but I got to breathe now. So um, yeah, that sometimes I, it's, the scene yeah. could take a week, a week to write, mm-hmm. and they read it mm-hmm. in like a few minutes, and it's like, look, that took me like a week to write. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, the killer is is like, and the killer is always, um, okay, so I spent all day writing the scene, and then I realized I only needed, like, 500 words out of it. So now I got to, you know, it's it's like, what do I have to do with the rest of the story? (laughs) Yes, and that also includes all the research that you'll sometimes do. You'll do all this Mm -hmm. research for it to be, like, one sentence. (laughs) Yeah. Because you want to make it correct. You want to make it accurate. Yes. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. I'm getting anxiety just thinking about it. (laughs) Yeah, it's that rabbit hole of, you know, I've I've talked to a lot of authors about, you know, doing research and not going down the rabbit hole. And Camille DeMaio was on a couple weeks ago talking about that because she wrote about the Hotel Emma here in San Antonio. And then, uh, but my favorite by far is Beverly Jenkins comment because she talked about how she was, she was writing a story that set in um, like 1800s New Orleans and um, Mm -hmm. it's nighttime. And she's like, I know there's going to be frog sounds. So she's trying to figure out what these frogs would sound like and then what frogs they would be. And then she says three hours later, she's still looking at frogs and finds out that there's a dude who had a frog circus that would travel all over uh, with these frogs. And she said, I, nobody's going to care about that, you know? And so I said, well, what did you finally write? She said, and there were frog sounds in the air. <laughs> okay. <laughs> After all that yes. research, she says frogs. <laughs> that matter. is so accurate. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. There's this yeah. rabbit hole of information, and for one sentence that may not mm-hmm. even have nearly the amount of yeah. information that she's researched. Oh my God, that's right. hilarious! Oh yeah, it's it, and I think we all do it, whether we write, you know, contemporary or historical, or even you know, do sci-fi because. If you do mm-hmm. fantasy sci-fi, that world has to be consistent within itself. And so that's yes. like you have to make sure it all works. Um, yes. And so, yeah, I, but we do love our readers. They are truly yes. the fantastic. Um, yes, and, and the reason so you're why writing, we often yeah. carry on. <laughs> Very much, yeah. It, it's mm-hmm. hard to keep writing when not, nobody, only person that's reading it is maybe your mom. <laughs> um, yes, exactly. So, well... And, and the funniest thing is my mom does read my books, and I, I have saucy parts in oh. them, which I appreciate that she reads them. Um, yeah. But my mother-in-law is not so much of a wanting to read a saucy read. And my very yeah. first book, she did read it. So when she called and said, so I read your book, and I'm like, why? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And she's like, oh, okay. I said, well, I thought you just bought it to be supportive. I didn't think you were actually read the book. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, she I asked my parents not to. Like, please don't. Um, and I, I live with them. Um, like, they, they're, they're the reason why I can write full time. But I live with them. Yeah. And, um, and I said, you can read them when I'm gone. When I'm not here, okay. when I'm when either either when I'm traveling or moved to somewhere else, go ahead. But as of right now, yeah. while I'm sitting here, I don't want you to read. <laughs> I don't want you coming yeah. to my door constantly knocking like so. Uh... <laughs> no, no, because I, I I get it. I get pretty steamy. Like I'm sure you noticed. <laughs> I get pretty yes. steamy, and I just can't can't do that. <laughs> Quite delicious. Quite delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yes. So they're always fun. <laughs> so you've got some other projects coming up this year, but I mean, is there anything that's that you've wanted to write? Like you wrote your rock star romance, but is I mean, is there mm-hmm. what's still on your to write list? Oh gosh, um, I have the is it brother's best friend. Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> brother's best yeah, friend. Fair. Like you know, you know the older the older brother. And he's got mm-hmm. this hot best friend and the younger, you know, like I I love that trope. Absolutely want to tackle that. Um, the oh, I want to do a western. 
And okay. um, and then I have and historical western at that, um, which okay. is going to okay. be quite interesting. I also want to do historical World War II, um, mm-hmm. and I want to do which I'm really really scared of, um, but I want to give it a shot anyway. I want to do okay. uh, steampunk fantasy. Oh, okay. I, I love steam. I love steampunk, and I do love fantasy, and you know, like fairies and dragons and things sure. like that. And so I want to combine the two. I want to combine the two <laughs> and do a steampunk fantasy novel. So um, yeah, I think I was, kind of, I was kind of in, yeah, I was kind of inspired by the ch- Amazon Prime show um, Carnival Row. Carnival Row. Yeah, that's what exactly yeah. what I was thinking about when you said that. Yeah, yeah, it inspired me, and I'm just like, I want to write my own. And and then just steampunk yeah. in general is just so up my alley. I so love the whole um, vintage modern thing. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like my my dream right. house is a converted warehouse with like exposed ducts, air ducts, and and brick walls and things like that. Like that's my dream place to live. And so, and so like, yeah. I just kind of love, love that whole thing. And so I'm just like, I want to write a steampunk fantasy. So, but I'm scared. I'm scared because it's going to be a lot. That's okay. <laughs> it's going to be a lot to tackle. It is. But the beauty of it is, is, is the, even just the ad- admitting that you want to write it and then yeah. you yeah. will, you will write it. Yeah. I have no doubt. Yeah. And it'll be Thank fabulous. You. Yes. So I will put it on my pre-order list. So okay. Okay. you will need to make sure <laughs> when okay. you come back, sure. you can tell us all about it. Yes, yeah, I want to hear. Absolutely. <laughs> so when do you anticipate your next um, your next book release? Like in the next six months before Christmas? What do you think? Um, I, I'm definitely no hoping for before Christmas. <laughs> definitely hoping okay. before Christmas for sure. Um, okay. November seems to be my month. It's, it's, I think it's because, one, it's my birthday month, but oftentimes, like, it's really weird. I don't know if you have this, this same thing, but um, that I release or, or write um, during certain time frames in the year, mm-hmm. every year, mm-hmm. almost. It's like I'm like, I often will release a book in February. I'll often okay. release a book in, like, May. And, um, okay. and I often will like release, um, I mean, if it's not May, then sometimes June. And then a, a lot of the time I release in, in November. And so it's just really okay. weird that it's like the same time every, you know, every year. It's like, huh, like, is that my zone? Is that my <laughs> the only it might time be. I can write and release? Yeah. So. Um, so I'm hoping around November, and it would be awesome if that would be sooner, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm trying right. to take a little bit of a break. but <laughs> Right. And you got to breathe. I do have you got to let that breathe. Of, yeah. Yes. But I have a lot of characters um, running through my head right now. It's actually, I've never experienced what I'm experiencing right now. Um, yeah. I Like, I have about... Um, four stories that are on rotation that, you know, one hour I'm thinking about one and then, you know, a couple hours later I'm thinking about another and then the next day I'm thinking about the the third and then the next day I'm thinking about the fourth. It's like a constant rotation and it's like I haven't figured out which one is going to come to like the forefront of my mind, which one's going to push forward and say, me, me. (laughs) Right. Right. So, um, but well, next but time you do, okay. yeah, yeah. Next time you mm-hmm. have your book out, or when you have your next book out, mm-hmm. please come back and talk to us. Absolutely, I'd love it. I had so much fun. I'm so glad. Well, this I was talking Ooh. to Twyla Turner. She has newest book is Rock the Curves. It is out now, and go pick it up. And you can find Twyla on her website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, and BookBub, and all those links are in the write up of the show. Thank you so much for coming, and this is Reader's Entertainment Radio with Patricia W. Fisher. This show brought to you by Circle of Seven Productions, www.cosproductions.com. Please be sure to subscribe, and welcome to our circle.